Hi, I'd like to share my experiences using some Ariel 70 millimeter film I ordered from India on eBay. The Agfa Avifote 200 expired 70 millimeter film comes out to roughly nine cents per six by six exposure. And we can compare that to the cheapest 120 film available today from B&H Photo in New York, which comes to about 48 cents per six by six exposure. I want to show you a few options for using this film. This is a 70 millimeter Linhoff back, the release mechanism to open the back, the dark slide, the winding mechanism, the counter, and an indicator to show you when the film is turning. It basically lets you know that it's loaded. Here I'm removing the dark slide. This back can be in a horizontal or vertical position by rotating it like this. And here it is installed in the camera, 360 degree view. And here's the Hasselblad 70 millimeter back. Now installed on a 555 ELD motor driven camera, removing the dark slide here. Great looking setup. And so let's see how we load this film. And note that these backs, whether Linhoff or Hasselblad, both use two different cassettes, one for supply and one for take up. And this allows you to cut off sections of the film and develop it at any point. You don't have to wait to shoot the whole roll. Now loading it's a little bit tricky here. Normally you would shut the dark slide at this point, but I'm leaving it open just to make sure everything's working properly. Now the one thing wrong with this back at this point, the lock mechanism doesn't work when you get to frame one. So I'm just being really careful to turn it just far enough looking at that counter in the window there. Now installing the back and removing the dark slide again. So there's two indicators here. You'll see one shows when the back has been exposed. The other indicator lets you know when the film has run out and the camera actually won't fire at this point. None of these backs worked for me right away. So I had to open them up and lubricate them. And of course I had to replace the light seals like any used Hasselblad back. Now, here is the Avifote Pan 200. You want to look for this P, the perforated version. This one is a non-perforated version, NP here. This little gadget helps me load the film. Normally that would be the supply reel on the left. I'm just demoing with this loaded developing reel and I'm transferring it to a cassette. There's many options for developing this. You could take one of these Jobo uh, reels and print this black 3D insert. These plastic reels are still available. I think they fit about 13 foot length of film. And here's a metal reel. I'm not sure who made this one, but I think Hughes still sells these uh, 15 foot reels. And here's some film I processed using those Jobo reels that I've modified with a spacer. Now let's look at some sample photos. So pretty good, but they are a little splotchy. It's not perfect. Another wide shot. This one's pretty good overall. When we zoom in, you can see some of the little black splotches, especially in the clouds. This Gray sky is a little splotchy, especially in the upper right corner. We can see that up close. And just some more shots. I'm developing these with Ilford DDX. You'll see some splotchiness in the upper corner here. This one came out pretty good. Same here. 
But overall, I think for nine cents a shot, you can have a lot of fun experimenting. You don't really need to worry about changing your film in the middle of a shoot. Really great way to use some of these vintage cameras on a budget or just experience the joy of using 70 millimeter film. This guy is particularly splotchy. I think it's really important to use fresh chemicals. You'll exhaust your chemicals pretty quick developing this length of film. And now the last photo. Thank you for watching this video and bye.